The foundation of any good shooter is a good solid shooting stance. Now you may have seen a lot of different stances out there, especially if you shoot quite often with the people next to you, left and the right, and there's a lot of different things going on. I have seen the bow of the back. Oh, I don't want this thing to be loud and in my face and pa-cow, shoot it off. I have seen the side stance, like the NRA bullseye shooter stance. I've seen in tight and close. Pa-cow, pa I've seen the Charlie's, what I call Charlie's Angels. The cup and saucer. And there's a hundred more. I don't have time for all that. Um, I guess I could do, I guess I could do a gag reel with that. But anyway, no, let's not. Because <laughs> you may be one of those people. <laughs> all right, look, here's how we do it. All right. Feet shoulder width apart. You're going to take your non-firing side. Okay, for me, it's the left because I'm a right-handed shooter. And I'm going to slightly edge my foot up. So now my feet look like this. I was shoulder width apart. Now I'm going to move this foot up. A half a foot. Get a nice slight bend in the knees. Drop my base, which is another term for your butt, but it's the, the, the heart, the meat of your weight. Drop your base. I'm going to do my draw, conceal carry draw, which is both hands pulling the cover garment up out of the way. Firm firing grip. Draw, rotate. Now both hands will meet. And I'm going to lock both elbows out. Get my head and chin into a nice comfortable position and raise the gun up to where my sights are aligned. Using that grip that we talked about earlier. Pressing out, roll the shoulders forward. And now I'm ready to shoot. When I'm finished shooting, bring the gun in tight. Non-shooting hand comes, brings the cover garment up, tight to the midline of my body, rotate, find the holster, slowly put the gun back in. Look, our feet are shoulder width apart. They're not out here like I'm with John Wayne and we're riding over through the west. You can save that for the pony rides at the fair. That's not going to work. You want to have a nice solid stance. So that should you get bumped, you're in a crowd or something, you can still maintain your balance and still keep your sight picture straight. If I'm too far out, either here or in front and back, I'm gonna be off balance. You can try that at home. Put your feet like this, like you're about to run track or something with Carl Lewis and have somebody push you on the side. You're gonna fall over, the knee's gonna buckle. Same way if you're Legs are too far apart. Someone pushes you from the front, you're gonna fall back. With a shoulder width stance, and one your non-firing side's foot slightly forward, then I can react back, forward, side to side, and still stay on balance. Now the key is, go ahead and try to lock these elbows out as much as possible. Now you don't wanna do it so tight that, <coughs> that you, you know, your hands fall asleep. You can, give me a, you can give a little slight bend to it, but the key is get them solid and roll your wrist forward, roll your shoulders forward, and that will stabilize. Now, the reason that a lot of guys like rifles over handguns, they say, well, I'm not very good with a handgun. I'm a lot better with a rifle. Well, think about it. How many points of contact to your body do you have on that rifle? The buttstock's in your shoulder. Your chin is on the buttstock. That's two. Hand and hand. So that gives me three and four. That's four points of contact, correct? Well, now I'm going only to two with my hands. So how do I stabilize that? Well, instead of just having my hands free at the wrist to do whatever I want, I lock the wrist. By locking the elbows and rolling the shoulders forward, I make it one long board. And that thing is just nailed to the side of that gun. So now where I did have one, two, three, and four with a rifle, I have one, two, three, and four. And then I can minimize the sway of it by running my chin a little bit forward and dropping my neck in between my arms as much as possible. And then raise the gun up 
to where your sights are aligned with your eyes. Don't drop your head down because then you lose peripheral vision. You can't see over the gun. All you can see is the sights. And if you're too high up, you're gonna see the rear sight, the front sight, and you're not gonna really be able to get on target very well. So it's a nice fine medium that you have to do with your own body type, but that will help stabilize and give you that natural feel of that four points of contact with only two. And that's what a good shooting stance will do for you.